Amen. Clap of praise uh, on this morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice. And how many happy people do we have in the house of God on today? That should be everybody. Y'all ought to be shouting about right now. Amen. You know, I'm just so thankful. Hey, Tony and Cheryl. Well, yeah, there you are. God bless you for that second song. Yeah, yeah, you hooked me up this morning. And then, and then I had Sister Maylon. I said, Minister Maylon, I, I just need for you to sort of kind of set the stage before I get up here. I don't want to come behind anything that's cold. I want to come when everything is already set up. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. Amen. We're, 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 we're here today, and I, want to, I just want to encourage you in the, in the Lord today. I have just a, just a quick sermon, and then I'm going to let y'all go so y'all can get a little bit of rain on you. I ain't worried about it because I don't have any hair, so it's, it's fine with me. I, I, want to do, I want to read two verses, though. This is very familiar passage. Um, a scripture, but the Lord, um, he showed me something that I believe that, that he really wants um, us to hear on this morning. That's, that's Luke chapter 10, verses 41, 42. I'm going to be reading from the ESV, and it says, But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Pray with me, you may be seated. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have given us. And I ask, oh God, that you would just bless my mind, control my tongue, and my feelings. I ask, oh God, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will overwhelm, Lord God, my being. And that you will speak through me, Lord God, for your people. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Come on and give the Lord another hand, hand clap of praise on today. I, I want to talk to you all this morning um, that, that, that you can do more with less. You can do more with less. Beloved, too much of anything can be just as devastating as not having anything. Too much coffee during the day may prevent you from sleeping well at night. Too much sun sunlight can cause skin cancers, but if you don't get enough of it, it could be, you could become overwhelmed with anxiety and depression. Too much of your time with a friend can turn a relationship to where one is taking, taking the other one for granted. But the reality is, is that if you don't spend enough time with that, that friend or that spouse, then you will not have or you'll grow apart. Too much work can make you a dull person. But if you don't work, you'll become financially depleted. And I love sweets. I, I, I just love sweets, especially paydays and Oreos. But too much of the paydays and the Oreos, it sort of kind of stretches my skin because of the weight that I gain. It's about balance, y'all. In this, it's about balance and moderation and, and right priorities because everything that you taste, touch, smell, and see, if done in the right moderation, it could be good for you. But it's only when you consume too much that your senses lose touch with this reality. And I've been chewing on this sermon for a few weeks. Because a few weeks I was, I was listening to this CNN um, interview with, with, with the brother that, um, that does the drive-ins, diners, and dives. And they were asking him, how do you, how do you eat these meals? Because he, he, said, he stated that, that he tapes at least three shows in a location. And they asked, they said, how do you eat three meals? He says, I don't eat the meals. I just taste the meals. And what really tripped me out was what he said after that. He says, I don't eat the meal because I want my palate to remain cleansed. Because he says, if I eat the meal, then I, when I go to the second place, I can't enjoy and I cannot, I, I cannot experience the food because I've already eaten in the other place. And I just believe that in the body of Christ that we sometimes are, don't shout me down, over church. We, we, we hear sermon after sermon. We stay in church all day on Sundays and all through the week and summers. 
And then we start thinking that we've heard enough when really you have heard too much. Too much of a good thing can be wrong. As a matter of fact, you can take for granted something that you always have. But for the folk that don't have it, just like Don said, they are sitting back wanting what you got. So you can be so full of good stuff that it becomes irrelevant and you take what you have for granted. And there are folk that are trying hard to get what you have and yet you sit back and you think little about what you have. Y'all know folk like that. And I've been pastoring for 18 years now and what I've learned is that it's all about balancing. And the one thing I've realized is that sometimes we are very over-churched. I am not anti-church. I am just saying that our churches have done so much that it's beginning to look like we are doing little. The, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. All that God really wants from us is that we worship him, that we extol him, that we adore him, and that we get just a little bit of that which he is, he's offering us. See, a connoisseur of wine doesn't drink wine, they just taste wine. Now some of y'all jokers sitting here in the pews, you can't be a connoisseur. Because see, some people can't handle or they cannot drink anything without, without getting, can I say it, drunk. But in order to really evaluate the wine, the connoisseur, he just, I'm not doing this from experience. I saw this on YouTube. They just taste and sniff the wine. We rush so much in church that we really don't even take the time out to hear what God has to say for us and about us. So here Jesus, he makes the case, and he's visiting the house of Martha and Mary, and they are the sisters of, of Lazarus. The atmosphere is welcoming, but there's some tension in the background Martha is preparing the food, and, and Mary watched us. She's just chilling out with Jesus. You, you see, Martha is acting like a good Baptist would during a homecoming because she's so busy preparing food that she neglects to spend any quality time with the people. And there are folk like that that's in the body of Christ that they're so busy doing church stuff that they don't have time and don't give a darn about being around people. The Bible says in verse 38 that, that Jesus, he enters into the village and there's a woman named Martha. And the thing about Martha is that Martha, she's welcoming Jesus, but that's all that she really does. You can be, you can be, watch this, just like Martha, being busy, looking like you're hooked up with God, but all that it is in the background with God is that you're just busy doing a whole lot of nothing. And there are churches on, on Sunday mornings, they are busy doing a whole lot of nothing. No one's getting saved. No one's getting baptized. The church is not going. No one's going anywhere. We are busy doing, watch this, nothing. But I want to mess with your heads this morning because Murray's she, or Martha, she, she, she's working and she is so busy that she's breaking, watch this, Jewish customs. Because when you look at the text at the very, the very beginning of Luke chapter 10, Jesus, he begins this discourse on because he has 70 disciples that he sends out to do ministry. And watch what he tells his disciples. He, he tells his disciples that when you enter into a house, watch this, and he says, 
if the son of man, Luke chapter 10, verse 6, he says, if the son of man or the son of peace is not there, he says, watch this. He says, don't throw yourself on people. He says, if people don't give you what you give them, he says, take it back. He says, if there is no peace, then the peace that you are bringing, it will come back to you. Martha, she looks like she's doing the right thing, but her hard work is a cover-up for her issues. And this is where the text just seems so unfair, because he told a lot of folk in church, they would think that Martha is the one that God loves the most, because Martha is the one that shows up early and leaves late, she, she, she's the one, he's the one that's always around. But then when we look at verse 39, Mary does quite the opposite. She's not doing busy things, but she's doing the right thing. Because Mary, she's doing exactly what the Lord requires of us. She's sitting at the Lord's feet. And watch this, she ain't shouting around the church. She's not speaking in tongues, but what she is doing is, is that she is listening to the word of God. Martha, uh, Murray doesn't care about connecting with the folk, or Martha doesn't care about connecting with the folk. Martha, she gets lost in her work. But Mary is a sister like so many people. They are not so concerned about the drama in the church. They are more interested in the word of God. You know there are people that, they, that, that the music ministry is fine with them. But some people they really come to hear the word of God. You know, Murray's the type of person that she thinks that the, the, the dance ministry is okay. But she comes and she enters into the space because she's hungry for the word of God. The testimony in the, in the praise service that we used to do, you know that folk showed up late because they didn't want to, because they missed that portion of the service intentionally. Because see, some, some people, beloved, watch this. They come because they really want to hear the word of God. They don't want to get connected with the church through membership because they don't want to get c c controlled by, by, by what, what church drama. There are people that come just because they just want the word of God. But watch this. Herein lies the dichotomy that's in the text because he Mary, she's just chilling out. And Martha is doing the work. Martha, the text says, she is distracted not with serving, but with much serving. See, the issue is not what we do and how we do it, but, we do, but what we do in service becomes an issue when we do too much and hang out for so long in the service. Martha is doing so much that she becomes distracted from God. And some of you would take Martha's side because you were taught that an idle mind is a devil's workshop. How, how, how many of y'all believe that an idle mind is a devil's work? Shop, you you y'all 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 just don't want to answer that, cause y'all know I'm looking at y'all, but I, but I know that some of you think that an idle mind is a devil's workshop. But the reality is, is this, is that a busy mind is a devil's workshop. If what we do takes our focus away from where we're called to do it, then it's no longer ministry that we do. It's called work. Doing church should never be something that we have to do, but want to do. And you're not obligated to be here, but you're here 
because you want to be here. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to come to church. Don't y'all go nowhere and never come back to be saved, Holy Ghost filled, and sanctified. Don't y'all go nowhere. Y'all come back next Sunday. I ain't trying to tell y'all to stay away. I'm just trying to let you know that this church, that, that the building does not save you, that Sunday does not sanctify you. Having the word of God inside of you keeps you from doing the things that are not pleasing unto the Lord. David says, that word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Your presence only becomes an issue. Watch this, Martha. Her presence becomes an issue when she no longer wants to do and she wants others to do it. Mar Martha is distracted by work. Watch this. And she does not value developing relationships. Hang with me. She's distracted. And the second slide is this, is that she thinks that the Lord doesn't care because ain't nobody acting like she acts. She says to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help. Watch the text. She is a control freak because she's controlling sister and she wants sister to do the work just like her. But what she doesn't really understand is that Mary is sitting at the Lord's feet and the text says that she's listening to him and that she's learning. And there are a whole lot of churches though, they don't like learning the word of God. All that they want is a spiritual high. All that they want is a shout and a sha -na, na But Mary, she's sitting down at the master's feet because she wants to be taught by him. She's distracted because chilling out with people is something, watch this, that Martha cannot do. You know that there are people that come to church, they don't know how to hook up, chill out, and hang out with folk. That's why folk, they'll, they'll show up to a program or a funeral and work in the fellowship hall, don't shout me down, preparing food, but won't spend time with people and chill with them because you think that working will make you look like you're good with God, but watch this, it's just work. And how many of you know there are people, y'all probably got a couple of names right now in your mind, there are people, they don't mind showing up, but what they'll do, they'll run to the Fellowship hall, but they won't come to hear the word of God. Watch this, watch this. Uh, um, because because uh, when I first started the, the ministry, right, I noticed that in our Baptist churches, when I was a deacon, I noticed, I noticed that uh, like the trustees, um, after the, um, the offering, they would disappear. And they show up again right before benediction. They show up to count money, and then they reappear in the sanctuary right before benediction. But when I started pastoring, I was like, no, y'all ain't, no, we, we, we ain't counting no money during no service, because y'all need to hear the word of God just like everybody else. That money can sit to the side, it can wait, and you can count it after service. But on this day, the day that the Lord has made, you got to worship just like everybody else. Because see, there are a whole lot of monsters in our churches doing work, but they don't get with the word of God. And what we need more than ever in the churches is we need the word of God in our minds. We need it in our hearts. We need it in the way in which we act. But watch what happens. My grandmother, Granny, I, we would call her, uh, she was the, the, the kind of person that, that, that when someone came to, to her house, she was, she was always welcoming and, and she would be like, come on in, come on in. And this is Columbia kind of vernacular. She said, come on in. And uh, we don't talk like this anymore. But, but she said, come on in and rest a spell. 
Y'all probably don't know what I'm talking about because it's some pig Latin. But she would just say, come on in and just rest a, a spell. Martha, she invites Jesus into, it was her house. But she's so busy in her house that she don't even know how to treat the guest. She is so concerned that her sister does not do what she does, but watch this, the saddest reality is, is that Martha is defined by her work, and Mary, watch this, is defined because she's building relationships. I was at the hospital in Richmond yesterday. My aunt, my mother's sister, she's transitioning, and I'm sitting by her bedside for a few hours, and I'm, and I, and I'm, and I'm thinking these thoughts. The final analysis of life, how is it supposed to be with us? Do, do, do you want to be remembered as a person that always worked, but at the end, you did not take the time out to develop relationships with the people. Or you showed up to church and you did your thing, but you never really got into the word of God. You were just a church person. I don't want to be remembered as just a, just a preacher and a pastor. I ain't getting buried in a robe. No, I'm not. I, I, I want people to remember me as Charles Gilbert Brown Jr. Because, see, that's what my friends call me. They either call me Bubby or they call me Charles. Very few people call me Pastor. Very few people that I know in ministry that I'm really connected with. I don't want to go out, and you should never go out without having a relationship with people. And you really don't want to go out of here, this life, without a relationship with God. We are so good at the mechanics of doing church, but sometimes we don't know how to be the church. Martha is busy. She's doing programs. She's doing homecomings. She's doing revivals and watch this. Ain't nobody getting the word. Because sometimes people are not concerned about the word. But I want to help you out if your relationship with God is with, and with people is defined only by what you do in church, then you have missed the mark. And you ain't got a life. Church is supposed to look like God, act like God, and represent God. Then why don't we Rest like God. You know, when we look at Genesis, God, he blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from what? All his work that he had done in creation. So you can shout me down, but I'm not saying, but I'm not staying in church all day on Sundays again. Then during the week, revivals, because, see, I am a creator. And creators, in order for them to, to keep, continue with creating, they have to rest. Church folk don't know how to rest. They just got to be doing church. They just got to be doing church. They got to be staying in, in church, but they don't know how to rest. It's okay, y'all, to take a day off. It's okay to go on vacation. It's okay to, to, to not show up at church. It's okay. Now, I know I'm going to get talked about by some pastors and, and preachers, but it's true anyhow. You know that there are people that, are, that, 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 that want to say what I'm saying, but they won't say it because of fear of the people. They are thinking exactly what you're thinking, but... But then watch what happens in this, verse 41. Martha says, Jesus, Mary ain't right because she ain't doing nothing. Now, don't get it twisted. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't, don't, don't continue doing nothing 
Because everybody got to be doing something. And sometimes the reality of people that are overworked in the church is that they're overworked in the church. Watch this. It's because ain't nobody doing nothing. She ain't talking about that. She's not, she's not talking. She's not looking at Murray as, as a person that's just lazy as all get out. She's just saying, Lord, can you help her help me serve you? But watch what happens. Jesus tells Martha, she says, he says, Martha, he says, um, Martha, you, you, you got some issues going on right now because cause, 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 cause you're trying to serve the Lord and you're anxious about everything. He, he says, Martha, you are anxious and you are troubled about many things. See, when I get behind the pulpit, I can't worry about what y'all are thinking. I got to look to the hills from whence cometh my help because I got to de- proclaim the word. I can't, I can't, I can't, I cannot be distracted by anything. By what is said, by what is done, I cannot be distracted and watch this. He says, Martha, you are anxious and you are troubled about many things. Jesus says this to Martha, you worry too much. And because you are worried too much, it keeps you from getting connected with the word of God. You are troubled about everything. And he says, watch this to Murray. He says, Murray, you need to learn how to chill out. Somebody shout with me, chill out. See, some of y'all don't know how to chill out. You got to learn how to chill out. When you come inside of this, inside of the, inside of the sanctuary, come on now, you got to have the spirit of, of Holy Ghost filled, chill out kind of people. Because people who know how to chill out, they don't mind, watch this, being themselves. The opposite of chilling out is what? Um, what's that word? Stiff neck, because you you don't know how to how the young people they say bring it in, bringing it in means um coming close into the circle so that we can have conversation. Watch this because because when you're anxious and you're troubled about many things, you don't want to bring it in because you don't want you don't want to expose yourself. But for Martha, the outside she looks righteous sanctified and holy ghost filled because of her work but the reality is this is that she is troubled it is a dangerous thing when your work becomes your therapy y'all ever work with folk that they work because they just don't want to show up at home they work in overtime And folk thinking they're trying to make some money. But the reality is is that they're working because they don't want to go home. Some folk, they work because they are troubled in their their mind. And they're working because they they don't want to deal with the realities of life. In your work, watch this. It's only supposed to finance you. But God can give you the peace that surpasses your understanding. And Martha, she does not understand this. Jesus always told his people, he says, when you are bothered by many things, he says, come to me. Everybody that are going through, if you're laboring and if you're heavy laden, and he says, watch this, I will give you rest. Martha doesn't get that part because she thinks that she has to do it all to be accepted by God. But then Jesus says, take this yoke upon me and learn of me, 29. For I am gentle, I am lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And then Jesus, he gives Martha permission to sit back and rest a spell. Look at the text in verse 42. He says, Martha, he says, you are are troubled by many things. And watch what he says. There is only one thing that is required. And we have become, watch this, modern Pharisees. Because there are so many rules and regulations in our churches. And God is like, there's only one thing that I want from y'all. I don't 
this is going to get me in trouble too. I don't want your tithes. I just want your sacrifice. I know preacher talk about the tithe, but God says, I want the sacrifice. I don't care about the money. I just want the sacrifice. You don't have to show up every Sunday. He says, no, you don't have to do all that. He says, I just want you to what? Worship me. That's all that God really wants. God, he really wants to, he wants, he wants to what? He wants us to what? To worship him. Somebody shout worship. See, we don't know what worship is. We think that worship is is sound or emotions, but worship is like this. I'm giving my heart to God and not to religion. And there are a whole lot of folk that are controlled by religion, but don't have that right relationship with God. There is only one thing that we are required to do for God, and watch this. That is developing a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And watch what Jesus was essentially saying. He was saying this. He says, this is Preach Brown vernacular. He says, I am not so concerned with what you can do for me. I am more concerned with what you can do with me. See, this is, this is how you all should be thinking. Brother, man, baby, girl, I ain't concerned about what you can give me. I am more concerned about what can you do with me. Because, see, you can give me and not have a relationship with me. But Jesus is like, no, it's not about your works so that you can boast. He says, I need for you to sit down at my feet and develop a relationship with me. You see, Jesus didn't die, die for the sanctuary or the church building, nor the stained glass windows, but he died, watch this, to save our souls. Jesus was nailed to the cross so that we could have programs just to raise money, but he sacrificed to set us free. He did not go through hell and back so that we could be overwhelmed with religious activities, but what God did, he just set us free through his son named Jesus Christ. Watch this. Is there anybody who knows exactly what I'm talking about? You are tired. You don't know how you're going to get it through the day. And watch this. Watch. I want to help. I want to help us out. The church is tired. Not Mount Marine specifically, but the modern church has become tired. We are tired of working without worship. We are tired of doing without giving the Lord some praise. We are tired of all of these religious gimmicks to, to, to pull people in. Because watch this. If people, if, if your church is not growing Facebook and YouTube, if people are not giving their lives to Christ, Facebook and YouTube, and if you want to hide at church, at your home, Facebook and YouTube, and not help out, then watch this. It is just simply saying that the church is tired. How many of you are just Tired of doing church. See, that should be all of y'all. Because see, watch this. I don't do church. I do God. My relationship is to God is not to the church. But my relationship to God is through Jesus Christ. Christ. My relationship to God is not wearing the cloak nor the robe. My relationship with God is because I don't mind sitting down at his feet. I need to get away sometimes. I, I have to be by myself so that I can be with God and just sit down at the feet of Jesus and learn all about him because watch this throughout the text of New Testament it talks about people sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary, she's, she, she's later found sitting at the feet of Jesus and watch this she breaks the ointment. She anoints his head with her hands and, and her hair. And she does that because she has learned how to sit at his feet. When we go into the Acts, we see the apostle Paul before he was called. He learned as a Pharisee because he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. And if we don't start sitting at the feet of people that can teach us because some folk, they don't want to learn. Some folk, they don't want to know because when I know I am responsible for how I 
like act. That's why kids act up in school because they don't want to learn. It's not that they can't learn. Some folk don't want to learn because when I learn and when I know how to do, then I am responsible about the way in which I do it. And that's why we have people in offices in our churches. They don't know how to do church. They don't have a relationship with God. Why? Because they don't want to sit down at anybody's feet and learn anything. But I don't know about you, but I love the Lord so much so that I don't mind spending some time with him. I don't mind praying to him. I don't mind worshiping him because I ain't doing religion. I'm not doing church, but I'm going to do God because I love the Lord with all of my heart, my mind, and my soul. I cannot lean into my own understanding in all of my ways. I'm going to acknowledge him because I've spent some time at his feet. And we watch this church. For all the jokers that don't come to church because they have issues with people. Watch us. I'm going to help you all out. We can do more with less. <laughs> because Jesus tells Peter, oh, I love this piece. He says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Why? Because when the Spirit of God is in the church, we can do more with less. I know that messes some people up. Because folk think that God needs them. But it's the other way around. We need God. And you're not doing the church or the service because you don't want to come no more. Guess what? Because I got good news for you. The church is still growing. The church is still doing. Matter of fact, the church is doing better. Sometimes watch this without. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord God. And I want to bless your holy name for all that you have done. I ask, oh God, that your spirit, Lord God, will overwhelm all of us to cause us to know that not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of the living God. Without you, God, we can't do anything. We can do a whole lot of things. But Lord God, you said, if the Lord did not build the house, then our labor is in vain. Bless the people, O oh God, that came on this cloudy day with their diligence in serving you. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise on.